Hello everyone and welcome back to Creation Myths. This video is a correction to my recent video featuring CMI's Dr. Rob Carter leaning on work from AIG's Dr. Nathaniel Jeanson on the mitochondrial and Y chromosome most recent common ancestors and on mutation accumulation rates on the remote Atlantic island of Tristan de Cunha. If you haven't watched that video, it's linked first below, so check that out, then come back and watch this so you know what I'm talking about. On that previous uh, video, a viewer left the following comment. She said, Dr. Dan, I read through the Y chromosome Tristan de Cunha paper. I could easily be misunderstanding something, but it looks like the, they were only checking a set of markers. They list them, also figure one, and there was no full sequencing going on. This paper is almost 20 years old, so that makes sense. I'm guessing you just found it. But if it's only checking a very small set of markers, of course they're not going to find additional mutations. What say you? I went back and checked that paper on Y chromosome mutation rates on Tristan de Cunha, and guess what? They're right. So I went back through my notes to see how that happened, and I figured it out. For that video, I read the two Tristan de Cunha papers on the Y chromosome and the mitochondrial DNA, and I went back through the 2009 paper I referenced and the two papers on deep pedigrees. But I was trying to get this done quickly, so what I didn't do is take specific notes on the new papers. Normally, in the outlines I write up for each video, I have specific references in specific places, which I can then make sure are linked in the video description. For this one, to save time, I got the list of links, but I didn't associate them with specific parts of my outline. So when I mentally substituted the methods of one paper for another, I didn't catch it. So that's my bad, and I apologize. I should have caught that, but because I was trying to go a little bit faster than normal when I put that video together, I didn't. Fortunately, my sharp art viewer caught the error, so we can go through the correct numbers here. What I should have referenced was the specific mutation rate determined in the mitochondrial DNA Tristan de Cunha paper rather than the Y chromosome paper. So we'll go through that now and compare it to Dr. Nathaniel Jeanson's pedigree-based mitochondrial DNA mutation rate, which he published in the Answers in Genesis journal in 2015. As we do this, keep in mind that Dr. Jeanson's rate is just fast enough to fit a young Earth timeline. A rate that's half as fast, just blow straight through his time limit. So first, let's look at the Tristan de Cunha rate. The authors of that paper state a maximum rate of one mutation every 36 transmissions, which we'll treat as a generation, a parent-to-offspring transmission. That works out to 0.028 mutations per generation in the mitochondrial DNA. We could convert this to the correct units. The correct units for substitution rate are substitutions per site per year, but the comparison works out the same as long as we use the same units across the board. So to save time and avoid some tedious math, we'll just leave it as mutations per generation. Conveniently, that's what Jeanson provides, so it makes for an easy apples-to-apples -apples comparison. Jeanson's mutation rate is 0.158 mutations per generation. That means the directly observed rate of mutation accumulation is 5.6 times slower than what Jeanson claims. The great thing here is Jeanson and other young Earth creationists who use his work, like CMI's Dr. Rob Carter, have generated a testable hypothesis that the single generation pedigree-based mutation rate can be extrapolated back in time indefinitely as the rate of mutation accumulation. Tristan de Cunha provides a test of this hypothesis. We can use Jeanson's mutation rate to make a testable prediction regarding mutation accumulation on the island. And what happens when we test this prediction? Jeanson's hypothesis fails. And as I said a moment ago, even a slightly slower mutation rate violates the Young Earth timeline. And remember, the rate I provided is the maximum rate possible from Tristan de Cunha. It could very well be even slower. And that data covers a span of, at the time of that publication, just under 200 years. As we know from the 2009 paper on mitochondrial substitution rates, the divergence between the single generation mutation rate and the long-term substitution rate only grows as time passes, making things even worse for Jeanson. I hope this makes it perfectly clear that the directly measured mitochondrial mutation rates disprove the Young Earth timeline. So that's a necessary correction to my earlier video featuring Dr. Rob Carter repeating Jeanson's claims about the mitochondrial and Y chromosome most recent common ancestors. I want to again apologize for the error and thank the commenter who caught it because that's how this is supposed to work. If you make an error, people catch it and you fix it. 
aside, I'd love to see young Earth creationists do this once in a while. I can think of literally one example where this happened. So thank you for watching. Please hit like, give me a sub if you're not already subscribed, leave a comment, and as always, don't get fooled.